and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I want to follow on from my video where I conceptually give you an understanding of series and parallel circuits and I want to now look at the mathematics of that. So as a quick recap, you remember that with a series circuit we clearly have three resistors here that are in a row and we remember that in terms of the potential difference or the voltage that is supplied over here then the voltage drops across this section here, which is V1, and the voltage drop across this one over here, which is V2, and the voltage drop over here, which is V3, then those three voltage drops add up to the total voltage. That is, if I were to get the total voltages, that is equal to the sum of the individual voltage drops across these individual resistors and that's showing you the conservation of energy the total energy input here at the source equals the energy drops over here and then i also discussed that if we have a current flowing through this circuit then the current is constant in this case so that's in terms of a series now if we looked at the parallel section where here you have the total voltage. In my previous video, I showed you just like uh, three slides coming from top of a tower, then these drops here are exactly the same. So if I have V1, V2, and V3, as in they are the voltage drops across those three resistors, then those voltages here are the same as this voltage. So VT equals V1 equals V2 equals V3, but the total current in this case, because it splits up into different parts, the total current here is not the same as the individual currents through these sections. So this section here would have current one, this section here would have current two, this section here would have current three, and the currents in this case add up to give you the total current. IT is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So using those information, and that's review, can we work out a relationship in both those cases, in both series over here, and also the parallel section over here, the relationship between the, the total resistance and the individual resistors? So here we've got R1 and R2 and R3. And I assume that most of you would probably understand that the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistors. Now, can we verify that by using this concepts up here and Ohm's law? And we can. And the way that we do this is this. And we know that the total resistance, RT, is equal to the total voltage divided by the total current, which I'm just going to label as I because we know it doesn't change across the circuit. And the total voltage we know is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 over I. So you can see I've just applied Ohm's law here. But of course, V1 over I can be separated out from V2 over I plus V3 over I. And now what you can see is applying Ohm's law, we have R1 plus R2 plus R3. So clearly the total resistance in a series circuit is just the sum of the individual resistors. That's not too difficult. Now let's apply that same technique that I've gone through here into a parallel circuit. And so again, what we have here is total voltage is, this, is constant and total current here adds up to the individual currents in each circuit. So what is the total resistance? Well, of course, the total resistance is always equal to the total voltage divided by the total current. Now, this is simply Ohm's law. But of course, if I now substitute that in, I get V, remember V remains constant, over I1 plus I2 plus I3. And so the total resistance equals this formula here. The problem here, of course, is, is I can't split this up simply because we have a denominator that is here in a, a sum and we can't split that up. And so the only solution we have in order to do that is to invert everything. So rather than saying total resistance, what we're going to do is that one over the total resistance is equal to the inverse of this, which is I1 plus I2 plus I3 all over V. 
Now you can see I can split that up because we have a common denominator i2 over v and i3 over v. And now of course I can say well that is equal to 1 over the resistance of 1 plus 1 over the resistance 2 plus 1 over the resistance 3. And so the total resistance can be determined by using this formula here. Now let's explain that a little bit more to give you an understanding of what's going on. If I were to add an extra resistor to this circuit, then what we are doing is creating another path for the electrons to flow. So if I were to simply do this, and I'll make it red, if I add the, this extra resistance over here to the circuit, I'm giving now, even though I'm adding a resistor to the circuit, I'm now giving another path for the electrons to flow, and of course they flow from left to right, because conventional current goes the other way. Which means the overall current is going to increase. So the total resistance of this whole section, let's say if we treated this as a one single resistor, you would expect that the total resistance drops because the total current increases by the mere fact that I've created an extra path. So if I added another resistor over here, 1 over R4, no matter what value I add over here, this value here gets bigger. But if this gets bigger and this gets bigger, then clearly this RT has to get smaller. And the amount that this gets bigger by depends on what resistor I add. So if I add a really high resistor, then let's say 1000 ohms, then in this case over here, a 1000 ohm resistor, we're going to give me a really small number. And so this resistance here actually decreases only by a small amount. But if I were to add, let's say, quite a small resistor, so let's say 0.5 ohm, then this value is quite large. This increases by a large amount, so therefore RT, our total resistance, drops by a large amount. And if RT drops by a large amount, my current increases by a large amount. So hopefully that helps you understand the relationship between current and the resistance. And as I continue to add more resistors in parallel, my current increases and therefore my total resistance decreases and that's going to be explained by this formula over here. So let's see that mathematically into practice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate various factors in these circuits using Ohm's law and the formulas that I gave you. So in order to make it equal, are we going to apply the same values to everything? So in other words, what we're going to use is the same object. So we're going to have a 12 volt supply for both of them. We are also going to have the same resistors. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a 2 ohm resistor, this a 3 ohm resistor, and this a 4 ohm resistor. And we're going to do the same over here, 2 ohm, 3 ohm, and 4 ohm. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some calculations. And what we're going to do for this case is, well, well let's work out what the total current is. And can we also work out what the individual voltages are of V1, V2, and V3? And these, one, these V1s, V2s, V3s basically mean the voltage drops across each of those things. And then we're going to, over here, we're going to do something similar. We're going to work out what is our total current. And can we also work out the individual currents in each of the components of our parallel section? And then, of course, can we also work out effectively what the total resistance is? And we can do that a couple of ways. So let's start over here. We have three resistors in series. So the first thing we can automatically work out is that the total resistance is simply equal to the sum of the individual resistors. And so in our case, we have 2 plus 3 plus 4, giving a grand total of 9 ohms. Now that we know the total resistance is 9 ohms, we know that the total current is simply equal to the voltage divided by the current. And of course, that is going to equal 12 
over 9. And of course, if we simplify that, we get 4 over 3 amps. Now that is the current going through each of these resistors. Now we're in a position to work out the individual voltage drops because the voltage drop across these are equal to the current multiplied the resistor. Now in each case, of course, we have the same current. We just have different resistors. And so for the first one, we have 4 over 3 multiplied by 2, which gives us 8 over 3 volts. Over here, we have 4 over 3 multiplied by 3, and now we have 4 volts. And lastly, of course, we have 4 over 3 multiplied by 4, which gives us 16 over 3 volts. And so now we've worked out the voltage drops for the three particular resistors. Now, how do I know I'm correct? Well, if I add those three values together, hey presto, I must get 12 volts. And that's again, confirming the conservation of energy. And that's a really helpful way to double check your answers, that if you're asked to find individual voltages across a series sec section, they should add up to 12. So now let's have a look at our parallel section. Well, the first thing we can automatically understand is that the 12 volts supplied here is the drop across each of these individual sections. And so the current in each individual section is simply equal to the voltage drop across that section divided by the resistance. And of course, that is true for the individual one. So what we can do is now say, okay, current one is equal to 12 divided by two. And so we get six amps. Current two is 12 divided by three, which gives us four amps. And current three, of course, is 12 divided by four, which gives us three amps. And so that gives us a great, if you look at there, six amps in this section, four here and three here. And so when we add those together, you can see that the total current here is equal to, IT is equal to 13 amps, quite high. Same resistors, clearly very different results when connected in a different section. So this section here, this total voltage divided by total resistance has to equal 13 amps. Now, since we know the total voltage is already 12 volts, we can automatically work out the resistance. And so now you can see that the resistance, if I rearrange that and just use a different color, we can see that the resistance is equal to 12 over 13 ohms. But can we work out that using our formula from working out the total resistance in a parallel section. Well, if you remember, 1 over RT must equal 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. Now, what's our lowest common denominator here? It clearly is equal to 12. And of course, here I have 6, here I have 4, and here I have 3. And so you can give me a grand total of 13 over 12. But remember, this is the inverse of the total resistance. So clearly the total resistance is the inverse of that, which is 12 over 13 ohms. So there you have it. Now you can see the fact that I, by using this formula, I've confirmed the calculations over here. Now, these are fairly simple examples. Later on, of course, you may have to do examples where you have series in sections of a parallel circuit or vice versa. You have a parallel section in a series, but the rules are exactly the same. Apply Ohm's law to each of the individual sections where you can, and then work out using the formulas and the relationships that we have in terms of current, resistance, and voltage to work out other variables. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like this video if this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.